Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. Uh, before I get into this heartbreaking uh, loss, this Warriors loss at the hands of a, a buzzer beater by Sadiq Bey of the Detroit Pistons, I first want to just uh, quick give a quick programming note that uh, for the new year, I want to try and experiment with some new uh, video stuff on the YouTube channel and I've put out on the community tab. If you go to the youtube.com slash Oakland Warriors channel itself, there's a community tab there and I put a couple of, of polls uh, and I'm going to continue to put a few more out just asking uh, viewers, subscribers, what kind of content preferences they have. I'm going to try a bunch of things, but it's just good for me to get a sense and idea of what people are interested in. So if you've checked those out and given me like uh, your opinion, appreciate that. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please check it out and go do that. But now this loss, man, this loss to the Pistons, that was uh, that was rough. That was rough because of the way it ended, right? The Warriors have had a few of these very, very close games, actually a few in a row, as a matter of fact. And it was like, are they going to be able to do it again? Pull this one out again? Clay Thompson, he was having a rough game, didn't hit a three-pointer until I think the fourth quarter and he didn't shoot particularly well but he came up big in the clutch he was driving to the basket hitting threes all that stuff and you know the warriors were down by one and they you know basically there was uh like a second or two difference between the game clock and the shot clock and jordan Poole. Dribbling up the ball in the half court set, even the Warriors announcers were like, "Steve Kerr's not calling a timeout for this one," and I was like, "Yeah, of course, you know, you don't want the defense to get set. That's the whole philosophy behind not calling a timeout in a situation like that." And I honestly had the thought, like, "Well, Clay's been hot, and Poole is going to learn." like we had all talked about from the previous game where he had those two gaffes in overtime, the first overtime and at the end of regulation. And I was like, he's going to give it up to Clay because Clay's hot and, you know, make it up for the last one. But no, Jordan Poole <laughs> tries some herky jerky uh, move and dribbles it off himself, loses the ball. Ouch. <laughs> I think after the end of regulation one in the last game, I was like kind of mad. And then when he did it at the end of the first overtime in the last game, I I think I said I just instinctually just laughed out loud <laughs> because it was so ridiculously absurd. And in this one, I, I my my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh, "Are you serious? Really? Did did he just do that again?" <laughs> And I was like, man. Um, but eventually, the Warriors got the ball back down by three now instead of just one. And, I mean, Kerr drew up a great inbounds play, right? It was uh, a sideline inbounds in the front court. And uh, Anthony Lamb ran out to the far corner. And then Clay ran uh, to the right wing. Lamb ran to the right corner and Clay ran to the right wing. Lamb caught it, hit Clay coming off a, a screen, and Clay just drained it. He rose up, you know, no one could block his shot because he's so tall and he shoots from such a high point on his release and it just went right in. It was beautiful. It was like great, you know, tweeting like, you know, Clay is back and that's why you give Clay the ball and all this other jazz. What I forgot to mention was that Draymond Green had been ejected. He'd gotten a technical earlier in the game and then a couple minutes before with like, actually just a minute before with like a minute and a half left, uh, he got into a, a jersey tugging altercation with uh, Isaiah Stewart, Beef Stew on the Pistons. And that was his, they got double text. Draymond was gone. So whatever. But I was like, yeah, you know, like Clay is still out there, you know, and this is his time as the 
lone core of their quote unquote big three, he rose to the moment, you know, but without Draymond on the floor, Ty Drum got lost in all the screens on the inbounds and Sadiq Bay got a pretty wide open look at a three and just, just nailed it, you know, and it sucks. It's a heartbreaker. It's one of those games and it is what it is, you know, um, honestly though, like what burns the most for me in this one is that I really, really wanted to see if the Warriors could go eight and no on this homestand. You know what I mean? Like that would have been such a beautiful thing after all the trials and tribulations throughout the season thus far. It would have been a good way to kind of, you know, start off the new year and kind of purge some of the first part of the season, first couple months of the season. But, you know, it is what it is. It was like, oh, for a second, the Warriors had moved up to eighth and could have potentially gotten to seventh in the West. But it is what it is. And you move on and, uh, yeah, you leave it at that, right? At the end of the day, the Warriors did not have a bunch of dudes. And you could see (laughs) the glaring lack of relative athleticism compared to the young Detroit Pistons who were just running up and down the court and running past Warriors defenders, all that stuff, right? Without Wiggins, without Jonathan Kaminga, without James Wiseman, you're missing a lot of just length and athleticism overall. So guys like uh, Jaden Ivey, Isaiah Stewart, Diallo, I mean, all these younger dudes that the Pistons have built up, like they took advantage of that. So at the end of the day, it's like, it sucks to get swept in the season series by the Pistons, like, you know, whatever. But, you know, this was one of those games where it's like, oh, I really just wanted this win for the 8-0, and <laughs> potential 8-0 and homestand. And also just to start really packing away wins and climbing up the standings, right? Like, I'm not as worried about this team when they're missing so many guys because what we saw in this one were a lot of positives, a lot of positives that we've seen throughout this homestand, especially in the last couple of games when other guys have been out. You know, you saw the team scratch and claw. You saw them fight back. You saw them perform in the clutch for the most part. And, you know, you saw a team that didn't quit. So that's a lot to work with. That's a lot to build on. You know, to me, guys like Ty Drum and uh, Jeremy Lamb, they've made a good amount of money (laughs) in the uh, past several games, you know, maybe down the road with another team, maybe with the Warriors, whomever, but they're proving that they are NBA players and that they can hit surprisingly (laughs) uh, a good number of shots. So uh, good on them. Lamb played 28 minutes, six for nine from the field, three for five from three, hit both his free throws, two boards, two assists, 17 points. Ty Jerome, 27 minutes, seven for 11 from the field, three for four from three, hit his one free throw, three assists, and 18 points. The Warriors don't stick around without those guys. I've said again, like you live and die with Clay and Poole in this one, and Clay had 30 points on only uh, three of 10 from three, but he was 11 for 23 from the field. Pool, 24 points, only three of 10 also from three, nine for 22 only from the field overall. Five boards, six assists, uh, whereas Clay had two boards, three assists. This was uh, a game against a Pistons team that was athletic and just kept coming at you, coming at you, and had confidence from the win previously. And this was a Warriors team that, you know, honestly looked a little sluggish from the start, but hung in there and you want to win every game. But this is one where it's like, okay, you know, the overall big picture positive signs are there. And as long as you get guys healthy, then, you know, this will just be a momentary sting. You know what I mean? It was reported before the game that Steph is likely, hopefully coming back against the San Antonio Spurs. So the homestand ends with uh, the Phoenix Suns on Tuesday. The next game is a road game against the Spurs, which I believe is on Friday of next week. So that's great. You know what I mean? Like I 
expected that maybe he might be out a little bit longer. But these are all really, really solid signs of his recovery. And again, while he's been gone, the team has vastly improved individually and as a whole. They've kind of learned a little bit more who they are, kind of formed an identity, again, individually and collectively, right? They've found who they are in terms of like their their fighting spirit, their competitiveness, and the individual players have found where they can really, really contribute and take ownership of these games and this team a little bit more. I mean, you look at Lamb and Ty Jerome, and I I talked about this a couple episodes ago, but they're basically better, younger versions of uh, JTA and Damian Lee, right? Damian Lee's having a great year so far, and JTA is obviously way more athletic than either Jerome or lamb but in terms of like these end of bench dudes who are you know basically two-way guys uh just like for a while lee and jta were then you know they bring a little bit more oomph and you know that's cool i'll take that and you know we've discovered dante di vincenzo how good he can be in the starting lineup when he has to be a spot starter plugging in for someone else in a closing lineup, in the clutch, all that stuff. Clay Thompson, I mean, you know, he's at home and he's finding himself. He shot really well as of late. And I've always figured that maybe, maybe that once the calendar flipped and once as a 12-year vet, he's staring down January, February, March into April, into the playoffs, that it's like time for him to kind of like focus, get his body, get his rhythm going. And we're seeing that, right? He didn't shoot it as well throughout the game as he did, obviously, when he when he dropped 54 in the previous one. But the way he's moving, the way he's carrying himself. And one thing I noticed is his shot off the bounce is, is going in, right? That was something early in the season because of maybe his legs and his lack of playing over the summer. That was something that was lingering a bit and he was forcing those shots earlier on but then once he got his kind of his head right and his legs under him and started playing more within the flow he adapted he got better and then of course there was the recent road trip which was bad for a lot of folks uh but to me it was always like he started playing well when Steph was healthy and let's see him continue to play well so in this one, it just was good to see him get some more of these moments. I would have loved to have seen him get the ball before Jordan Poole dribbled it away. <laughs> uh, but he hit the big shot, and obviously the Warriors, they had a chance, you know, they had a chance uh, to take it to overtime. But it's a make or miss league, as they say. And Clay made it, and Sadiq Bey made it. So, you know, what can you do? Okay, you just move on to the next one. The next game in the revenge season homestand, they get Orlando on Saturday. So if any of these vets, these guys who played deep into those double overtime games against Atlanta, you know, if they were at all worn down, tired, then they'll get a few days, you know, Thursday, Friday off, and then, you know, go into Saturday at 530. So. It's a bummer. It's it's going to burn. It's almost one of those games where it's like, oh, you wish you had like another game like right away. But I'm sure they don't because they play the games. I just sit and watch. So uh, they could definitely use the rest. Also, it was reported that James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga, that they are still out. They will be out for at least another week and they will be reevaluated in one week. So you know, that's, you know, keeping an eye on that, you know, Kaminga is wearing a walking boot. So that could be a little bit of a concern. I don't know if you can just go from walking boot to playing in a week or so, but fingers crossed is nothing too serious. And hopefully Wiggins comes back soon as well. I forgot what, what game he's coming back, but he should be back soon. And then Wiseman, 
it's rough, man, because like these are the games <laughs> that he really, really, really. I said this after the Atlanta game. These are the games where he really could have like stepped it up a little bit. I've always talked about how he doesn't do well against Isaiah Stewart because they have history and that Isaiah Stewart is just like, you know, the opposite of James Wise. I mean, he's a guy who's like tough, tough minded and a little bit shorter, but just bulky, you know, strong and uses his width and his strength really, really well. Whereas Wiseman is a little bit more laid back personality wise, a little bit more polite, I guess you could say. And in observations has not really, really fully used his size and his strength as well as he uh, will in the future. So this would have been another good game for him just to get those developmental minutes because, hey, he's on the bench, but like he was just starting to get good again, right? He was just starting to show positive signs. And as I've said in the past, every time he starts to show signs that he's turning some kind of corner, he gets hurt, right? This isn't a torn meniscus. This isn't like, you know, coming down with COVID, this isn't something like he's had in the past. This isn't his wrist, but it's just kind of a bummer, right? Because a homestand like this has been so good for guys like Clay and the two-way dudes and just the Warriors subs in general, that this is where that you build confidence. The confidence that I was talking about earlier that this team has collectively put together. So, you know, DeMichael Green might be coming back soon too. So, on the road, who is Kerr going to go with if Wiseman is still with the squad? And when Jamichael Green gets back, it might be time to send Wiseman back to the G League, right? Because they're going to need all their dudes that are available on the road. But who knows? Maybe if Kaminga's out, you keep Wiseman around? I don't know. But... It's a, it's kind of a bummer, but that's that's the way the cookie crumbles, and it has crumbled for James Wiseman for a few years now. But I still believe in the kid, and obviously uh, I want to see him prosper and get reps on the court. But it's unfortunate that this was a prime opportunity that, through no fault of his own, uh, he could not take advantage of this opportunity. Anyway, uh, I'll call it a night after this one. And uh, yeah, like I said earlier, if you go to the YouTube channel and check out the couple of polls I put on there, would love some feedback on kind of stuff that y'all want to see in the new year.